it was you or I who did the recording. Anyway, I, I'll, I'll just, if you don't mind, that would be great. Um, but uh, thank you all very, very much uh, for, for joining this evening. And uh, I'm Anthony Willoughby, as you've kindly uh, seen. And really, it, I'm 70 years old, so I'm probably older than, than most people here, but it's just this glorious sense of, of adventure. And that's what I've spent my life doing and looking at maps and, and discovering inside everybody, there is a map that can be drawn. And once that map is drawn, people can start to see insights, et cetera. So I'd like to, obviously some of you have kindly been here before, but I'd love to just show you the story and, and, and really make you, as you think about things as to what that map might be. But just before I do that, I'd love to introduce you to Doudson, who is a friend of mine and we're working together. Doudson's based in Rwanda, but just to say a little bit about uh, life journeys and, and how we're working together. Doudson, please. Yes, good evening. Thanks, Anthony. Thank you people for having me here as well. And uh, we met on an adventure actually, when I was on the adventure of my life, quitting jobs and having one-way tickets, not knowing where it would end. And I met Anthony in Japan, in Tokyo at the airport. And that's where our conversation started about what, what, what we're searching for and what leadership is and what corporates do and what nomadic wisdom is and how far that seems to be from each other. And um, yeah, uh, I ended up following some connections from Anthony and ended up working at a small Kenyan team in Nairobi, working with uh, Anthony's philosophies and working with territory mapping. And after two years doing that with that team, I started up a branch of that company in Rwanda, in Kigali. That was again a new adventure. And um, yeah, that's been three years ago that I came to Rwanda. And then recently we, we started collaborating more and more again on how to use this mapping in various ways. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So yeah, I think it's time for you guys to, to listen to Anthony and not too much to me. And um, then I'll see you a bit later. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Dyson. Thanks so much. Cheers, thank you. So I'd love to just show you through some slides that sort of, they're all taken by me and reasonably recently. Um, that one was lying in front of the horseman in Mongolia. And uh, I was actually nearly killed because as you see, the horsemen are coming straight towards me. But I think it really is around in one's life. It's changing your world, be clear where you are, be bold. And, and the freedom comes from that lovely sense of clarity and, and boldness. And that's what I love about nomads. And years ago, I wrote a, a book called In Search of Inspiration. And the opening line of it was, I believe the greatest opportunity and challenge in my life so far has been the freedom of choice to shape my own destiny. And I think the freedom we have is actually quite frightening. So what I'd love to do is sort of thinking about where is the journey in 2021? Where is it gonna take you? How do you see it? Do you sort of see the rivers that you're gonna cross? This is out in Western Mongolia on a journey there a couple of years ago, do you see it as being moving past the mountains or are you actually going to move through and look at the mountains and work out how you're gonna to get to the top? And these are the sorts of metaphors we discover that is inside everybody, this glorious sense of what are we gonna celebrate? What are we going to feel that sense of winning and, and community? And I stress that none of this has evolved from great uh, studies, I was told I was far and away the most stupid boy at school and that there was no way I should get to university, so I might as well leave, which I did. Um, but so these stories have really evolved from being with the Maasai in Kenya and from sitting around with the nomads, asking people, what are their priorities in life? How do they make decisions? And I was with this group and I asked them, I said, so who is the leader here? And they looked at me in total curiosity. And they said, what is the problem you're trying to solve? We have many leaders. 
And it just made me think that, you know, in life, we're always trying to be the leader, but actually shouldn't we really be the one that knows how to solve the problems with the wisdom? Uh, and over the last five years, I've been spending a lot of time out in Western Mongolia. It's just fantastic, you know, joining nomads on their migrations. And again, this glorious sensation of movement, of clarity, of where we're going, that purpose and that adaptability. But equally, I've spent a lifetime having as much fun as possible. This is hitchhiking out in the Western deserts of China back in 1981 when I'm still taking people to Africa to sit down and really put that record button of life on. What is, what is really important in our lives? So we continue to have that adventure and really take it in our minds. Because I think each morning, you know, the sun comes up, but, you know, are we awake? Are we looking at what is, what is actually happening? And just as what I've learned from the nomads, it's around that sense of clarity, that purpose and that ability to adapt. So how do we simplify? How do we go back to those values that I think are so important? And ultimately, how do we sort of rewild, declutter our mind? That's up in, in Northern Kenya in a wonderful place. But for the Maasai and for other people, it's around really, looking after their wealth, looking after their assets. Because to the nomads of Kenya or elsewhere, it is looking after their capital, their shackles. And I ask, are we really looking after what we've been given in life, our assets for inspiring people, our assets to look after it? Because to all nomads, they have a very, very clear map. They're looking after their cattle, they need the skills to look after their wealth and their skills and their talents, and they know where to take them. And they also have their dependency and they know their threats. So their life has clarity. And as you think about your territory, please think about what does it look like? What are you really protecting in that world? And where is it? So this is a map again drawn by the Maasai, but they can talk about depending on the season, depending on the rains where they take their cattle. And are we really taking our own assets to where they need to be? But for them, everything is around a core center, a core center of those values, of the clarity, the trust, where responsibility, authority and accountability is all aligned but they watch themselves develop. They know those steps of what it should be. And what I've been doing over the last 40 years is really working out a way of how do you bring this relevance and this transition from being a warrior or being a leader in your community? How do you move from the community to being respected from what you can contribute? What is that wisdom that you have that you can share with people? But once you have a map, and that's what I'd like you to think about this afternoon, is really what is your territory? What does that map actually look like? Because every indigenous person, as I said, seems to be able to show they know where they are. They know that village of theirs. And that's really what I want you to think about is, is your village. And really, what is, what, is around, what is surrounding that village of yours? And if you think about it into the organizations, the maps that you have, or is it your personal adventure you want to go on? Is it your career adventure or your community? And start trying to think about the threats, what it looks like. And ultimately, is it your personal journey, your own territory? What are you trusting? What are you giving away? What are the swamps and the mountains? Or if you're in something like the NHS we've been working with today, is it ultimately around that community that you want to build? That extended community where you all have the same goals, the same target, that fire that burns that you want to attract people to? Or are you on a migratory journey? And those are the metaphors that I'd love you to think about as you think about your own map that you'll be drawing. What will it look like? 
and really think about on that map, what is worth protecting, what is worth hunting, and, and what are you sharing? That wisdom that you're giving out to that community that you're creating. Because from all my times that I've been with nomads in Western Mongolia or East Africa, it is this glorious sense of welcome, handing out hope, handing out beliefs. But what I found with nomads in particular and indigenous people, they have this ability to adapt. They have absolute clarity of how they look after their assets and their wealth and their skills and their talents, but they adapt them to the season. And I think we're too fixed on the structures that we have and don't have that sense of the clarity, the what are the problems that we're actually trying to solve? What are the skills we need to unlock? And maybe the skills we need are timeless skills. It's not about a new digital whatever. It's about knowing ourselves, knowing what that, that journey is and the same things that we've worried about forever. Because I was saying, whether you're in Papua New Guinea, Kenya, or Mongolia, they have a map. And the map is a way of migrating, a way of moving from one place to another. And I don't mean physically we have to move. I mean, it's how do we mentally move our map so that we can explain metaphorically, this is where we are, this is where we want to go to. But what I found is when you get executives together, everybody's map is different. And what you have is the chairman saying, we're heading to paradise. And then you ask the next level of employees, what do they see? Bullshit bridge, fantasy applications, everybody off on a different island. And I think this has been exonified or whatever by, by COVID and everything. People are on their different islands, they're frightened. How do we change from fear to hope? How do we start to work together with people? Because the map gives you the emotional perceptions of how people see things. So our territory is under threat. We need to move to these massive opportunities. And I think we all need to migrate today. The trouble is we can't actually do anything because the senior management spend their entire time hugging each other. And you as leaders, are you giving yourself and the others the hope? Because once we've got a map, we can solve the problems. We can feel that sense of hope. And whether we're running Ferrari in Australia or Japan, that is the map of their strategy. So what we can do is to take pages of documents and simplify them. So this is working with the Gates Foundation, uh, with Bill Gates. Uh, there's Melinda with Bill when he's going to do some abseiling off the Great Wall, Warren Buffett and his wife. And it's wonderful just seeing the naturalness of people, people with that sense of, of confidence and, and looking and the playfulness that I think is so important that we lack. And having time to talk about what is our world? What are our priorities? And then we worked with the Gates Foundation. And what they drew was their map of how do we get Seattle to work with China to raise Africa? What is a project that is so big? What is the biggest project that you're working on in your own life at the moment that you can draw out in your own life? Where is it? What are you gonna do? And what they came up with for the foundation was they're gonna mobilize resources from China for global polio eradication. And this got everybody so excited that I actually saw a month or two ago while polio eradicated in China, countries with polio cases in the last 12 months. Now, I obviously can't claim credit for this, but I do remember when that conversation came about. Let us do something that is so big that gives us so much hope. And even for individuals, as we're talking to yourselves about, these are Aboriginals in Australia. Her name is Denise. And she drew this map and she drew a map showing that she's only got one eye open because basically she, her parents were the stolen generation. They were stolen, taken away from their communities. How disgusting. But we did it with Can Canadians and everybody else. We took the people away. So she grew up with an education. 
but she wants to go home to country, knowing who you are, being culturally aware, repatriation, tribal law, living on my land. What is our land and our territory so we can have both of our eyes open so we know how we actually contribute? And I think for many of us, we have a wonderful time at school. It's all great and we get our degrees, we get our exams and we suddenly find ourselves in the waterfalls of life. We suddenly find it's frightened, it's fearful. And the, the moment this woman, Alex, is in this little tent at the bottom of a waterfall, having been through some amazing, horrible experiences. But she wants to move and she's got a plan of how she can move away from that. And I think, as I said, all of us, we find ourselves in the storms at the moment. We're not quite sure what we do. But the reality is with nomads and Mongolians and elsewhere, they know if there's a problem, everybody gets together, they get a spade out and they solve the problem because it is clear. So as you think about your maps, please think, where are you? Where do you want to go? What is happening within your community? What are the roots that you want to draw? And what do you have to trust in yourself? And this is the trust that we think is so important, which is why it's now being taught in schools about the trust wheel, about the visible leadership, the invisible. It's not really a problem. It's just, I guess it's more like, it's more like maybe... Hello? Okay. So really, but what I found out is once someone's got a map, you can share your ideas, you can share your hopes, you can say, this is what we really need to do. And what I've actually, I've never really looked at the scientifics of this, but what I've now discovered is brain GPS tells you where you are and where you come from. And this I find quite an exciting uh, idea because it was, draw, it was written uh, by someone who won the Nobel Peace Prize uh, sorry, the Nobel Prize for Brain Discovery in Science in 2014. So I actually wrote to the fellow uh, Edward Moser on the left, and he's just sent me a really nice email uh, saying, you know, thanks for the interest. And, and really that this is sort of fascinating about what, what we're doing. I sent him the maps that we've had drawn. And I think we are tapping into something. I think we are lost. We are robbed of our points of reference. And that's why I believe a map provides it. So there I am in an eighth generation expatriate, no real idea of the identity. What I knew, I wasn't sort of a traditional English. I was, as I say, I went to a school. Uh, and then when I was 22, I took a one-way ticket on the Trans-Siberian Express in search of adventure, hopes, beliefs, dreams, and, and ideas. And I arrived in Japan and I spent the next 30 years there gave me an opportunity to go to China in 1975, hitchhiking across Australia. And I talk about hitchhiking because it's such a wonderful way you have to be trusted and you have to trust. And I think we all need to find ways that we can be trusted today because we think the world is unfriendly, but I've done 40,000 miles of hitchhiking and people have always been nice to me. And on these journeys, it's where I sort of started to learn the importance of trust and trusting yourself. Because on this camel safari, 21 days through northern Kenya, I'd got lost a few times. But each evening, the Maasai would wander into our little community. And what I saw is they had substance without arrogance. They had presence. They knew their territory. They were not frightened in the way that I had been. So I thought, what is it they've got that I've lost? So I went back to the, I went to the, meet the Papua New Guinea ambassador in Tokyo called Joseph Nombri. And he remembers first contact. And he said, why didn't you go to my village in the highlands of Papua New Guinea? Why didn't you go and ask them your questions? So there I am in the highlands of Papua New Guinea. And I started to ask them, why do you have so many feathers? They said, well, a big man has many feathers, but a bigger man can hand out his feathers. And I asked them, why do you have a spear? They said, well, you have to earn it. You can't buy it. You can't sell it. You can't give it away. A spear comes from leadership and responsibility. And it made me think of all those people in Tokyo, mainly the foreigners who had director on their name card, and they thought they deserved respect, but they hadn't earned it. 
And I'm sure none of you ever thought about feathers and spears, but I'm sure each and every one of you, when I say, can you think of a leader who has really earned his spear? And can you think of people who've tried to buy their spear? I think it is deep, deep, deep inside us that that's what it is. And this clarity comes from how you contribute. And this is a map drawn by the people in Papua New Guinea when I, by the ambassador, Joe Nombri, when, he got back, when I got back to Tokyo. I asked him, what is the most important thing in his life? And he said, it is my territory. I know my duty and I know my aims and ambitions. And I think today we need to know our territory. Where are we contributing? Where are our communities? What is our duty to ourselves, to that community? How do we articulate it? And as I said, I'm eighth generation expatriate. So I had no real concept of, of really what my territory was. So I thought I could go and explore what was opportunities in life. What could I do? And so I said, yeah, come and climb a 7,000 meter mountain. I went, wow, God, I'd love to do that. But I realized that to climb that mountain, and as I've been on other journeys, whether it's through the Takla Makan and elsewhere, the actual expedition is not that difficult. It's around though learning new skills, but it's more importantly around your frame of mind. And I'd been on one expedition across Papua New Guinea where we decided to walk from the Fly to Sepik rivers about 180 kilometers. And on this journey, I'd seen that there were, on the map, I'd seen that there were villages. So I thought food won't be a problem and I was fat enough as it was. So we had 24 bottles of wine and no food. And one person spent their entire time complaining. And what I saw is that complaining undermines any team. Complaining is actually a form of cowardice. It is a way of removing one's own responsibility and trying to be a victim. So for future expeditions, I got people to sign a document saying, I will not complain if I get eaten or trodden on by animals, because I think we need to make our own personal commitment. But what I saw is you get to the top of mountains, as I say, by sharing your hopes, sharing your dreams, unlocking your passion, because you have that clarity of a map. And it made me think, what do I really want to do? And one of the times on one of my expeditions, I'd fallen out of a window and paralyzed myself in Western China. And it was a fascinating time to be in Japan. 1989, the stock market was through the roof. Sony was alive, Honda was alive. The Imperial Palace was worth more than the whole of California. And I started to think, what is it that makes Japan so successful? And as I say, having fallen out of a window and paralyzed myself, I thought I'll go along to their outdoor training school and I will start to find out the secret, the essence of Japan's success. And what they did, which I found absolutely horrendous, was they gave you badges of shame. And I think it's what we do to children with education. We say you can't do it till you pass the exam. This is answering the phones, screaming in front of railway stations, doing stupid things. And I saw that by getting people to humiliate them and to feel a victim, it was really disgusting. And having been at this school, I thought what I will do is I will unlock trust and willpower in people. And that really has been my life journey since, since 1988 and before, to unlock people's sense of trust and willpower. So I moved out of central Tokyo. I lived in an old farmhouse, moved into the countryside. And I thought, I will give people and I will not complain attitude. So as you think of your territory, what are you not going to complain about? What is your community that you're going to have? And as I say, trust and willpower. And that's when we opened our training center on the foot of the Great Wall. Because what I saw is that you can create people, you can create a team so easily. But to me, everybody still said, what is my purpose? What is my responsibility? Who am I as an identity? And that really made me think that maybe Success in life is really about knowing your territory, knowing how you hand out feathers, knowing who you are, 
and ultimately having that clarity of purpose. And really all of that, I think, goes back to having your map. So what I'd like you to do for 15 or 20 minutes, and I'll give you a briefing on it, is to think about your territory, to think about what are you hunting in your life? How do you see it? Where do you want to go? What are the rivers that you want to cross? Do you have all your camels ready with you? Do you have the right guide? And as you stand there and look out at your future, that's what I'd like you to think about today. And thank you for wanting to try to think about this mapping methodology. And what I'd love to do is to ask Doubtson, whose wonderful art this is, to brief you on thinking about your territory. But maybe just before that, does anybody have any questions or anything else about uh, so far? Okay, Doubtson, over to you, please. There's one question I see just popping up from someone. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Casey. Casey would like to ask a question. Go ahead, Casey. I'm on meeting. Hi. Um, I'm really inspired right now. Uh, I just have a question because um, I get the no complaining thing with the team, and that was an awesome example of uh, those people who were complaining during the desert. But what's the difference between complaining and being with the team? And I wanna call frustration, like you know they're doing something wrong, or is that just arrogance and ego? No, I, I don't think so. And I think it's a really difficult thing. And I think that's an ex excellent point. I mean. I think on an individual thing, it was, you know, if your toes have gone, if it's, you say it's very cold, you know, my toes have just turned black. That's an observation. And I think it's always trying to come up with a solution. Right. So I think if you can always say that, you know, I think this is, could this be better to do it in a more positive sort of swing, but also get people to write out what is their declaration as a team? What are we complaining about? What are we not going to complain about? And it's a wonderful way of sort of getting people to start turning it into humor. I mean, one company I know did, they had people complaining and they came up with the charter. And in the middle of a meeting, someone would say to them, they say, that's a complaint. No, 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 it isn't. Yes, it is. Put a quid in the charity box. And it creates a sort of a, a network of people wanting to solve problems and not just to be difficult. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. So Dowson, maybe Dowson is, can give a little bit more of an idea, please, Dowson, on, on what people might think about on that journey of theirs. Yes. Yeah, and you gave such a great answer, Anthony. I just want to add one thing to, to this, because observing facts and things that, are, that need to be better, it's actually also your duty. It's your responsibility. But it turns into suffering when when you feel it as a complaint and when complaining becomes common within the team. So that I just wanted to, to add that one. So what we've been uh, helping people with or, or giving a bit of guidance when you start mapping. And I wanna say immediately that you can completely also forget this and draw whatever comes up in you, but this may help a little bit to think in a certain direction. So if you start from the center of this image that is kind of where your village is. And it doesn't have to be your physical village, but it's your life at this moment. What is going on in your life or in your village at this moment? Who are sitting around the fire? Are people happy? What are they talking about? And how are we protecting the village? What is going on to, to shield your, your life at this moment? And what is going on just outside of that? And um, is that a good place to be? Or are there things that you're not completely happy with or that should change? And then it's interesting to look like in which corner could those changes be needed to be made? And where would I have to go on an adventure? Or where could an adventure help me make some changes? And as Anthony said before, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to uh, quit jobs and migrate and move places. It doesn't have to be 
so so drastic, but it can be small things of realizations that make you look at things a different way. So if you think about the personal adventure and you think about, do I actually know what would give me energy? Where is the sun shining for me? If I think about my future, but also what, what could be my life philosophy? Is it something like IWNC, I, I will not complain or something else? And do I follow my inner compass of knowing what is the right direction to take? And do I have balance? And then also realize what could be the swamps that get me stuck and that suck me in and where I lose energy or where I don't see a way out. What are my feathers actually to contribute? How am I leading in my life? Things like that. And if you see it as a career adventure, if there is something to do for you, you know, what are the mountains at the moment that, that perhaps block you from reaching there? Or what are the mountains to climb to achieve something else? Or what are the, are the spears that you can use as tools? What is the responsibility of your spear in your career? What would keep your fire burning more? And what would that territory look like? And if you then move on towards the other side of the village, you could also use this from the perspective of an organization where you would have different people about the territory and, and making one shared map. Are we talking about the same targets and goals? What is our kind of life philosophy? And what are we contributing with our feathers to the community that we work in? Do we all know our key projects and who is responsible for them? Do we have that clarity? And if you think about your community, is that a shared fire that we're sitting around? Is it a community of healthy trees? Are we, are we rooted? Are we strong together? Do we know how to, to cross the mountains? Do we know what we're protecting? So these are just simple symbols and metaphoric yeah, pic pictures actually that can help you think in a certain direction and that can help you reflect. And, uh, oh, I see, I forgot the airbags of trust, which I, the, the story of, of Anthony and hitchhiking all over the world. You know, I think if you, if you think about your territory and what you have to offer, and if you have that clarity, you will feel that the trust in yourself, that, that airbag will inflate. And if you understand how you relate to others and how things work, your, your, your trust in others, what are your decisions in that in trust? It's just... Good to keep you, to get you thinking. So just as a tool for you to, to start drawing your map. And I think you have like 20 minutes, Anthony, is that correct? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And as I say, just think about maybe some of the things that are worth sharing, as Doutson was saying, and worth protecting. And uh, What does that look like? Is, is everybody happy to try for 15 minutes now to, to draw their territory and start with their ideas of... Uh, of where they are and where they're going on the, on their map. I'll leave that that map up. Is everybody happy to try? Yeah, I think everyone is. Yep. Um, yep. I see Carlo. I will try. Thanks. Brilliant. Okay. Great. Well, wonderful. Well, it's an honor to, to try it. And thank you so much because you know I'd love to see your arts. Everybody's map is different. Everybody's identity and ideas are different. So please, 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 we'll just leave you for 15 minutes and people obviously take much, much longer over this, but maybe just, just to get started, start in the center, start moving out as Doubtson said, uh, please just, uh, just imagine it. So that's great. So thank you. Thanks for your enthusiastic comments. Right, we'll leave you in peace for 15 minutes then. Anthony, can you uh, just put up your screen so we can get some inspiration? I will definitely put up. I stress the, the maps are all, the, the imagery is from Doubtson. So uh, that is her, uh, her wonderful art. So yes, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, and I'll, I'll go back to it. But so maybe you just imagine, you know, you're at 40,000 feet. Please draw a map of your territory of freedom of success in by 2021. Is it personal business or is it a combination? You know, what are the roads and the bridges you must build, the mountain swamps and rivers you must cross? And what are you hunting? And just, just let your imagination flow and imagine you'll be talking to a Maasai or, or Mongolian about their own maps and their own worlds. And that's more than possible for us to, uh, to do. So. Uh, 
if that's all right, please try. Please. Um, would anybody like to uh, to go ahead? Uh, Ishmael, have you found it interesting? Sorry there, Anthony, I was muted for a second. Have you I did find it? it quite interesting, actually. Um, however, um, I, I found it, I don't know if everybody else found this challenging, but it, it was kind of hard to separate the uh, personal career, essentially, or the personal journey and the yeah. community journey um, and the career journey. It was very hard for me to kind of differentiate my different goals for my yeah. different aspects of life. But of course, in an indigenous community, they're all one and the same thing. And I think it's us who sort of split them mm -hmm. and try to focus on the different ones. And in theory, they should all be pretty close to the same. We should be our community and protecting it and growing ourselves and growing our skills and, and growing our hope and giving people hope. Um, see. Great. Would anybody like to go ahead and, and show their maps and uh, talk a little bit about it, maybe? Do we have a volunteer? Thank you, Linda. Yes, would you like to go ahead? I don't know how to show it, you know. That's it. Just hold it up there. Yep. This is where I live. Uh, I have uh, books. I have films and documentaries and a camera. And I'm also connected to people, but more uh, from distance now. But, you know, slowly, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for the big jump, the big jump over the COVID swamp. <laughs> yep. The COVID swamp that uh, makes me uh, not moving, although that's my nature, I think. So I want to jump with all my skills in the future, get there by car or by plane to start a journey in an unknown um, country, you know. That is what I want to gain skills and wisdom and uh, be busy with photography. So I want to, to go to Moscow, then by train I will discover Siberia, then I will take a boat to Japan, then discover the lovely Hokkaido where there are supposed to be volcanoes or not working, and then slowly down to Okinawa, where for me is the, <clears throat> the thing that inspires me, it's uh, the people that are happy, peaceful in their um, village, and where 100 years old is still a young person. I don't know, but I think I am attracted to move uh, to uh, elderly people. And, uh, you know, I, I see them only as wise. And actually, there are no limits. There are no limits. And it's having that hope and the freedom and the dy dynamism. What was an insight you got from that map? Yeah, that, uh, <clears throat> that I don't want to be stopped by anything and that I will not hurting anybody, will trust on my uh, skills. And uh, I am very creative. So sometimes I do uh, exhibitions or I have worked for books uh, with others. So, um, but it's uh, this, this photography is also the way of making contact with people, seeing the world and gaining wisdom and be a little bit more courageous, I think, than uh, because yeah. of these goals than maybe uh, otherwise. Otherwise, one could say, why, why? But I don't mind. I, I feel fantastic when I am doing this. And I also did today take some steps. Um, so it feels like I'm already on the road. Good. It's a good feeling. Back <laughs> on the road again. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's my favorite hashtag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Do we have any other, any other volunteers, please, who would like to uh, talk a bit about their maps? Uh, Okay, I can show you my map. Yeah. Hi. 
Okay, let's see if I can. Okay, I, yeah, this, my territory, I decided to uh, draw hard because I'm, uh, I love what I got right now. I feel very, I, and this is what I get uh, uh, from doing this is that I feel very blessed with what I got. I got, uh, this is me, I got my, my family, my, my family and friends, my work, uh, the Panama Canal, my niece, that is, is my, the most important person in my life, my hobbies, and this is my house that also represents my bed where I sleep alone right now. And this is why I have uh, like coming from the side, um, looking, uh, that would be my, one of my goals, not to sleep alone for the rest of my life. <laughs> and also uh, moving uh, from the work part, uh, will be, uh, I have some spears. I, have, I only already have one, but I'm looking forward to get more spears. But if I don't get it and I still, uh, I, I, I only keep the one that I got, I'm still gonna be happy with it. And in peace, looking forward to 2024 when I'm going to retire. And as uh, one of my goals, and I hope I, I'm doing that right now, is also giving up feathers to my friends and families in a way of, of, of uh, love and, and teaching and gift, why not? And uh, then all, all these mountains are, uh, these things are, uh, I'm looking for uh, the things that I'm uh, looking forward to, to climb, like uh, learning more, my spirituality, traveling, keeping uh, good uh, my health, and reaching my goals. That's it. Wow, what a lovely map. Where are you from originally, if I might ask? I'm from Panama. Panama, okay, bueno. And where are you now? I'm in Panama Fantastic. right now. Fantastic. Whoa, does anybody have any comments on that? Linda, what are your thoughts on that map? Uh, Anthony, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, have you switched off, off your camera? Oh, sorry, I have. Yeah, by mistake. Sorry about okay. that. Yes, 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 yes. You want to see your beautiful face. Yeah, well, I'm delighted. I'm not hiding anything, I assure you. Um, Linda, do you want to make a comment? That was fantastic. Yeah, it is fantastic. And uh, I see her... Uh, a few years younger than I am and also in the surrounding she loves a bit and and you know but having goals and uh, climbing all these mountains with the skills and the learning and the wisdom and to be happy yeah and I think it's that dynamism that energy of realizing there are so many other things to explore yeah Julia so do you have any what were your sort of uh, thoughts or your insights from drawing the map? It's really, it's like, it makes me like, uh, it's, uh, like uh, really uh, ask myself, uh, what do I want? That's something that I don't normally ask because I'm the kind of person who like, uh, I, I go like, when I get to the river, I'll figure out how I'm gonna, gonna cross it. I try not to stress ahead of time with things. That's the way I, the way I am. So that's why I normally don't don't I don't I normally feel about wait about the future, but uh, this definitely is a, is an excellent exercise to make you uh, think about it because it's, it's, it's of course this is very important and it is a way of having a a plan of how to cross the the river ahead of time, but right. in a in a easy, easy way. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I think Doubtson, maybe you can say a little bit how you work with people on coaching using this math, the maps and, and everything for them. Yeah, definitely. This, uh, I was uh, amazed by how much you got onto that map in just 15 minutes. And especially as someone who, who doesn't think ahead, that's really amazing. Yeah, I work with, uh, with people from coaching perspective and then uh, sometimes it's really helpful to use it at the start of a coaching where somebody draws their territory, how they see their life at the moment, to identify where, where are they stuck or where do they want to go and do they have the tools and the spears and the feathers 
Or it can also be after a couple of coaching sessions when things become more clear for them to then put everything together on a map. And, um, and, and having that visual representation of their territory and of their journey really, really helps. It's uh, for many people something that they stick on the wall or put on their desk or have as a screensaver on their laptop or something like that. So it's the visual part makes it really, really working for us. Great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, that was great. Are there any other comments from anybody um, for, about the map or what the thoughts are? Yeah. I have a question. Oops, yep. should I ask just or uh, raise yeah. hand? Please. Oh. Yes. Is this the same like roadmap? I am psychologist and we know this. Uh, I, yeah, ex I experienced this as roadmap. I know yeah, yeah. you draw as well the path and where you want to go and the stages. Is this similar to this or totally different? I, I, I think it's very similar. I mean, I don't know it from, from that perspective. And I'll let Doutson talk in a moment. But for me, it's very much about the emotional perceptions of where people are. So in businesses, you get to the honesty of how people actually see and what they feel. And some people are quite content where they are and others feel they have to move and create the map. So I think the roadmap is very much secondary from this. Once people work out the rivers, the mountains, then they can create the road. But you can't create the road until you have the context of of where you are and I think it's how people see how they feel uh, then that's really a part of it and looking at their sort of peace of mind at this moment which is another part of our program. Uh, Doubts and you can probably answer that better than me sorry I hope that was a reasonable answer. Uh, yeah, yes of I, course of course and the in the territory should we have as village and river and the feathers they should be included in the picture? No, there's no right or wrong. Awesome. This is just, okay. you know, normally we've just said a blank sheet of paper, but people want to get a little bit more. And so we're providing more ideas. And this obviously people can spend hours and hours drawing their maps, thinking about it. The second time it becomes easier, they get more clarity of what they want to do with it. So it, it's an evolving story for people. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. So yes. Sometimes draw a, a football team or a choir, and then it's about the music, the how it sounds, and do they does everybody know how to play the instrument, or uh, is there any audience to 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 watch the choir sing, or people drawing a kitchen and trying to prepare food but not having the ingredients, or it can be it can be any metaphor as long as you make it visual and that it means something to you and it gets your brain to work to make the connections and then and, and then you become really much more creative and and details also in in solution thinking than you would otherwise do if you just write or put bullet points or anything like that so it's right. really matter what totally you, what you draw yeah yes but, but I, I mean, one day we'd love to do more on the psychology because the number of rivers, I'm sure everybody's got a river that we need to cross. And I think everybody feels that we are at a bit of a crossroads and therefore what's on the other side? How do we get across it, et cetera? Yeah, would any, anybody talk. else like to say something? <laughs> well, nice. I want to share something because I wouldn't. But uh, I was exactly, it, I, I thought it was amazing work. I, I work with uh, complementary therapy so for me, it's interesting, but what was really for me was about revelation here. That's what happened. More than thinking, and I love to travel, I'm curious, was like a revelation. Like, I don't know the map. I just moved to London, eight months in lockdown from United States that I moved from Brazil two years ago. And for me, I was in the river. So that's why I got a inspiration. And it's like, just... This moment was uh, very uh, clear for me where I am now, and I'm just arriving the land. So have expectation that, that everything should be done. No, I have to cross a path, find the people, find the community, don't get in the holes of the fear. And that was amazing, you know, just I don't make plans in general. And that was like a revelation. So thank you so much. That have was you got your maps? Yep, I got you. First image, I 
and the boat and the river, like, oh my gosh, and I'm horrible drawing. Yeah. And then this map was then I called Journey of the Hero. That's a name now. So great. Yeah. So that's a that is the boat, and then I yeah. realize it's arriving. It's the right position. I was already in the land, kind of island, England. And then there's holes of fear, um, expectations, try to have some stability, all that. And then the bridge, that we find the bridge and the sun will be the inspiration. There was a revelation kind of thing. Curiosity, freedom, new perspectives. Yep. So, yeah, great. You must act. You must act upon it and tell us when it happens. Yeah, well, you know, I think it's when you arrive in a new place. If you start with all your expectations, yep. you are in trouble. And I think that was the revelation. No expectations. Just walk a little bit, find your people, and see what you have to bring and what you, yeah, how how you can share. So that was the. And when you see someone else's map, you can never forget someone's map. So you really feel that you know them. Yeah, this and is that's very another cool. way of getting to know people. And what's the rivers? Dowson, yes. Yes. You want to say something or, or no, it's just. Oh, no, no, no. No, it was great. I love the enthusiasm and revelations are always powerful. Something sometimes when you see something suddenly or or know it, you cannot unknow it. So this is a shift, you know. You you'll see things differently from now on, and that is, I love that. It's beautiful. Are there any other anybody yeah. else like to go ahead or do we have yes, any Anthony? Yeah, I I I, um, I just um, also spent some minutes to just to write down the map and it's really very powerful because actually it's like a, a mind map but it's like um, more pictures right you can put a lot of um, topics into the pictures so with symbols yep. and I think this makes it much more more powerful than a mind map because in a mind map you have this um, obviously also from your center point you have this whole different branches yeah. and then you can connect them to each other but these are one-way processes right so these are somehow showing you a kind of a direction obviously in time but it, it doesn't give you a kind of a circle circle kind of agile as we call it today with a cycle approach and this and this uh, map um, the territory mapping i think is a quite a good combination of of the circle aspect of, okay, so you have the um, community adventure, you have the career adventure, of course, you have the personal adventure and the organization adventure. And if, I, if I'm, well, probably you, you don't see too much. No, unfortunately. Yep. Okay, here. So, so I just like um, see this kind of, um, here is the middle. So it means that um, here, this is the fireplace where the kids are, <laughs> and there's a kind of a fence which is not, not very well protected. And I have to cross a river um, just to catch up with my partners, with my business partners who are on the Brexit side, on the UK side, and I'm on the, uh, I'm, I'm on the continental European side. So I have to cross this river, which has very, very strong currents and they're already far ahead of me. And I need some people who will help me to climb the mountain of our kind of a startup. So it's very, very interesting. So I will, I will actually refine this kind of model and make a really nice kind of a painting out of it or just like probably with some color pencils. Yep. And, and, then, and, then, and then you can use these pictures to break this down into an action plan. Yeah. Uh, right? uh, so you can take every picture. Yeah, and that's really what we, that's really the, the whole process. I mean, um, what I thought might be an idea is if we sort of talk a little bit about how the process works, would, would people be happy to see that? Uh, and then if anybody has any questions, please, please, and we'll give you our emails as to what we'd like to do. And, you know, working with individuals or with companies, we worked with a number of companies, the NHS this morning and, and worked with a number of huge companies. So could I just uh, maybe ask uh, Doudson if you might be able to go through the, the the different programs? Are you happy about that? Is that a is that a good step for the last ten minutes? Is that uh, 
Is everybody happy with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Or if anybody has a question, are you, are you all happy I, with that? Daniel? Yeah. Can I ask one question? No. Yeah. It's about the river. Everyone is referring to river as something to get through or cross over. However, in my picture, I've got river as well, but I see it rather as a source of water, yep. source of food, uh, a way to travel on the boat. And I see it this way. Yeah, and I think that is the joy of mapping. Everybody sees it differently. A lot of people have rivers as a protection. So they've got the protection of the river. So it's just how everybody sees it differently. And in a company, it's fascinating. You've got a 30 page business plan, but everybody's perception of those 30 pages is completely different. And that's what, you know, and that's bringing that simplicity. And that's really what, how, we, how we've developed it over the time to help people in those different areas. But yes, it's wonderful how people see the warmth and, and the different areas. Yeah, I saw a little such of that. You know, I saw the river as more like going with the flow. Yes, yeah. Or flowing into something. And um, I'm not very good at drawing. And um, so I just put something like that. And uh, it... What got very clear to me all of a sudden was like, just because I'm good at something doesn't mean I have to do it. Yep. And so I can at any time um, get into the river and, and, and flow somewhere else and, and change it, change yep. my, I mean, that's what came out for me was like, you know, just because I've been teaching for 30 years and I am getting a little sick of rich kids Yep. Um, not wanting to participate in the language classes their parents have paid. And I just much rather would teach the minority communities here in Istanbul um, right. to get integrated into the Turkish culture. And I happened to, you know, I teach German and English all day, but I think I much rather teach Turkish to the minority children. Well, you know. We're teaching the mapping to children all over the world at the moment. So please, if we can talk about that to look at values and success, we'd love to talk to you about that. So I'll obviously put my email, put my email inside. But but Dowson, do you think maybe you could talk a little bit about the the different programs and how we've developed them? And we'd love to develop them with you because obviously this is right at the beginning uh, of what we're doing. Um, so it really is, this is, this is the sort of the organizational map and then looking at the, the, different, the different types of maps. So this is for the individual. So if I go back to, the, uh, to there and if we start looking at the personal um, and then the different elements of it. Dowson, would you like to talk about how we do it with the personal map? Sure, yeah, thank you, Anthony. So the personal map is, of course, very personal. So again, there's no wrong or right way to do it. But this is also just to, to help get someone going by focusing first or thinking about what does freedom and success mean to me? What is on the right hand side of, of my map? Where do I want to go? What gives me energy? What inner direction do I need? What are my targets? What's my life motto? What would give me balance or what would a balanced life be? And how do I grow to be a strong tree and perhaps many trees with my community? Because the, the health of the tree says something about the strength of your, of your community. But so often when we, when we find ourselves in phases in life where we look for some guidance, we find ourselves, let's say on the left-hand side, maybe looking for direction, either feeling much influenced by, by storms and losing our leaves, maybe living too much from ratio and mind, what happens a lot with people and too little from passion and our heart. So first of all, you know, you need to be bold to be able to cross the river of what's holding you back. And it can also be a river to fish in or to, to gather a lot from, because otherwise we wouldn't stay on that side also for so long. But once you cross it, what so often happens is that we find ourselves in the mountains of self-doubt and limiting beliefs or in the swamps of hopelessness and indecision. So 
Can you go back, Anthony? Sorry. Yeah. So um, w when you start drawing your territory and you get clarity on what your territory is and what your journey could be like, that is such a powerful start. And then you can start thinking about your feathers. What do you want to contribute? How do you want to lead? And what is worth hunting in your life? You know, what is your responsibility? What are you after? And what is worth protecting? What are your values? And if you know your values, you start understanding what gives you peace of mind and, and knowing yourself in order to create more balance. And if you know what's worth hunting and you have a philosophy like I will not complain, you know, it makes you stronger and it makes you feel good about yourself. And if you know what you want to share and who you are and what your identity is, you know, it gives you so much trust in yourself and in the universe and in others as well. So by working this kind of framework out into different sessions, this is when you, how we kind of, uh, worked it out if you start by kind of zero point like where are you now and then one is your territory and in the future like where do you want to be and where do you want to go and then looking at the swamps like to just to become aware of what usually keeps me stuck why it has it been so difficult to make a change then focusing on who you are what your mission is what you have to offer and what you are after and then also often self-doubt limiting beliefs come again so we'll have mountaineering sessions to help you through that and then we have a whole range of tools based on Anthony's adventures and of course on some coaching tools that can be the backpack sessions as the last step so this is a five-step program that is built up like this and uh, we'd love to hear from you if, the, if, if that makes sense but the, from territory mapping to the swamps to the shield spears and feathers mountaineering, and then a backpack session, depending on what you need. So that is, a, that is our, our, our draft program for personal development. And I think the, the people who know a bit about coaching, it fits very well into the GROW model. The GROW model stands for the G is for the goal. You know, where, what are you after? But then the R, what's your reality? And the O, what are your opportunities? And the W, what will you do? What are you willing to do? So for the organizational adventure, somebody asked like, uh, what's, the, what's the difference between career and organizational adventure? So the career is about you within your, within perhaps an organization or as an entrepreneur and the organizational adventure is for a team. So uh, CEOs are our clients who say, you know, I want to achieve this or that with my team or we need, we need to go somewhere. So then a logical first step is to have everybody in the team make a territory map. How do they see the reality? How do they see the journey? And from discussing that, bring it into one map as a team or as a whole organization and have that as the vision on the wall. Now, if you have a next session after having established that, that, that alignment, then focusing on how are we going to do that? You know, under which values are we protecting and what are we protecting in our territory? And what are we after? What are we hunting? And what are we contributing? And how are we leading? So agree on that as a group as well. And that then leads into a session of prioritizing. Now making plans like what, what are we going to do first? What is first most important? What's next? And who owns these projects? And then in the fourth session with an organizational <clears throat> adventure, we let everybody who has a role in that team or in that project think about their personal map. So if, if I have this responsibility, what will be my swamps and mountains? Where do I need to build bridges or roads? What are my feathers? What do I need for my community to keep the fire burning? And if they present that to each other, it becomes such a strong, strong, like uh, people start understanding each other in a completely new way. And they now know how to support each other. And then we kind of celebrate that with the last session, which we call a, a tribal session, to commit to our, our goals, to commit to how we inflate each other's air, airbags of trust, to commit to the motto that we, will, that we will use, and to keep each other's fires burning. 
So that is like almost strategic team building and implementation of, of the vision. So these sessions, uh, yeah, I just talked through this, but um, the, yeah, also curious to hear from you guys if, if that makes sense and if, if how, yeah, how that comes across because we just uh, started developing this and, and using this with companies. So we're still also in the process of tuning it. Thanks for your attention anyway, and curious to hear some reactions. Anthony, did I forget anything? Do you want no, to absolutely not, not at all. That was, uh, that was great. And it really is, as I say, it's a new way. We've been running workshops, obviously, face-to-face -face for companies for the last 20, 20 years. But it, it's really only now that we're really looking at how we can, can bring this to the individuals, to corporates, and, and really deliver it, because it does seem to be able to be delivered over the web. So if people have any questions or thoughts, that would be brilliant to hear. I, I do, actually. I have a couple of feedback and a question. In terms of feedback, I think it's, um, it seems like a very powerful tool because, uh, I, you know, I personally have been learning the power of images uh, as compared to writing down or to numbers or stuff like that. Our minds really speak in images. And so I really see it as, as, as very powerful. However, I do see... Like personally, if I were in a in an organization where I were asked to do that, I was asked to do this, I would feel like, oh, is my boss going to see my my drawing and uh, my map? What if my map doesn't, you know, what if I I, I don't know, I write something which, you know, it's it's about self censoring really when you are doing the map. I absolutely agree with you. The only possible way we can work with a company is when the chief does it themselves. So the leader of the group has to be involved in this. So I run it with the NHS this morning, Dowson and myself. We had the head of the division going, this is what we have to do. We have many, many challenges. I want to understand everybody's perspective. It mm. can't be prescribed. It, it really, really can't. And I wouldn't even do it with someone. Uh, you know, I've had people say, well, what do they do on their maps? And I, I'm not going to tell, you know, it, it's got to come from the heart. This gets too much trust, too much honesty uh, for people to, to be, to manipulate it. Yeah, exactly. And, the, and yeah, so, yeah. So that's, that's the first thing. And then the other thing, it would be, um, in, in part, when I can't remember the, the name, sorry, I can't remember the name of the lady who was explaining the organizational uh, territory yeah. mapping. Uh, but in, in part, I felt, again, if I, if, I, if I was the employee in that, um, in that uh, organization, I would think, oh, again, they are pushing me to, you know, be all a team and all that stuff, you know, all this corporate stuff, which is going around over the last, I don't know, I don't know how many years, but they force you to be our team. We are all, ha all happy together and we are all in, it, in this together. So I would feel it a little bit like um, uh, force fed somehow. Yeah. But the, the trouble is that the, the great thing is you get the greatest cynic or the greatest person who's against something. Then they're listened to. And everybody mm. is then listened to equally. So it's magnificent for diversity and inclusion because everybody has an equal say in what they think's going on. So if people sitting around a meeting, I mean, the words of a meeting are completely meaningless because there's no context. So what you really need is someone who wants a bit of honesty and wants actually to solve some problems and get something done. So if you've got a clear focus, then you can can bring that. And I think Dowson's worked with many, many teams could, who could could say that. Yes, Dowson? Yeah, <clears throat> that's correct. And sometimes people start uh, sessions like that because they, they can be tired of maybe these kind of things or they don't have the most trust in something like this, changing things. And uh, it is... My experience is it has never disappointed me in terms of what it does to mutual understanding and to feeling a new sense of like ownership as well and um, influence. And yeah, so it, it can start that way and it usually really changes. We've had people who, uh, of which the CEO was, was kind of 
uh, worrying and doubting, should we take them, yes or no? Because they're always so negative. But those become the greatest ambassadors. I've seen that more than once. It's, it's very interesting. Hmm. But it does require honesty. It really does. And it's a different way of doing things. But uh... so we also brief a, a company leader about how, you know, what we need from them. And if they are ready for something like this. And if they really mm. want to genuine input from, from their staff, yes or no. Because if not, then, then it's not the right tool for them at that moment. But if they do, and if they also embrace that in a way that they open such a day or such an event, and, and of course we brief them on how to listen to people's maps and they go last and all, there are all kinds of things that, that we help to make that, to, to guide that and to facilitate yeah. that. And in terms of the question I had is, uh, is there any guidance available, um, you know, any, any, Uh, really like something written which we could use because I'm thinking of uses you know keeping on on, on on developing my own territory after this session but there was lots of to take in and definitely I would uh, <laughs> I would be pleased if there was some sort of guidance I could refer to after this session we're literally working on that at the moment and how we put it together I mean please please I put my email and and doubts and if you can put your email in the in the chat box please, please, please send us an email and let's have a conversation of how we can work together because our passionate belief is everybody needs a map today. Every leader, because once you can show someone your map and you understand the map, then people can follow you and listen to you and, and they can be inspired by you because it gives people hope. Tessie, you have been uh, very quiet. Have you been enjoying this? I, I have. Um, what I mostly noticed is that I've been protecting a lot and 2021 is all about hunting and sharing. <laughs> Great. Is that personally or is that sort of your business? More work, everything. Yeah. Everything. I, I literally, I literally uh, hear... Diana Ross's I'm coming out spinning in my head right now. Yeah. Because I've worked a lot, but it's like I haven't, I need to just share and hunt. I need to do the risks now, you know? The work's been done behind closed doors. Now it's all about the risk. Yeah. Getting out there, getting your map to life. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. Do you feel ready for that as well? Do you feel ready for that now that you've yeah. seen it? In yeah. fact, I was kind of ready September, but then lockdown happens again. And, uh, you know, it's like, I, I, I'm a bit selfish right now because I feel ready now, but the world is a little, you know, like, so I, I can't expect the world to work with my desire right now. But um, uh, yeah, I, I'm excited about the future. Well, great but i mean please do get in contact because we're coming up with some workshops and seminars and we've got all sorts of um, maasai and other people talking about life and what's important so so please please get in contact and uh, we can let you know more of what we're doing with this because we really feel it's a movement it works all over the world and we've got people here from at least 15 different countries so it's just wonderful listening to people solving the problems and inspiring each other But Nadia, thank you very, very much. Is there, or is there another comment from anybody or any other questions uh, you might like to I do have, yes, I do have a comment and it's uh, coming back to uh, the previous gentleman who just spoke. Um, if I understand correctly, it is, it's possible that in the organizational quadrant, um, if you're just an employee and you're actually working for a company or a boss who's not very inspiring, then you might have tremendous limitations and uh, I understand that you know when you're working with CEOs who have an open mind and who are interested in you know being uh, better bosses in other terms and who want to you know help the organizations and their employees move forward with the company then it becomes that much more interesting but when you're working perhaps for a boss who's not very um, inspiring then uh, I guess that quadrant becomes very, very complicated to, uh, to figure out. 
Oh, yeah, it, it really does. And and you've got to be really careful that you, you know, you don't draw, you know, no, no. I mean, it just can't work because they just don't want honesty. I mean, they really don't. And a lot of people do not want honesty. This is why this is pretty intimidating for some people. Uh, what you need is someone saying, hey, thanks for that information. That's fabulous. That's really helpful. How could we solve that problem? Uh, and then people can actually work out how we cross the river, how we do it. And it's a very, very empowering tool uh, for leaders who've got courage. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you, Anthony. I have just one final question and also to, also to Dalton is like, um, but I'm still very interested to see how it really it's applied on a corporate level because this reminds me a little bit on this kind of story like you know how to implement waterfall versus agile leadership management styles or project management and and this kind of comes a little bit into the same picture is like when you have a change then there's a certain uncertainty also in the organization and of course it depends on of course on the on the kind of um level of the employees obviously um how do they kind of draw these maps based on obstacles challenges and goals right so if you apply this on a corporate level then you have to know exactly what kind of level you want to advise and what kind of level you want to um, you know apply this kind of mapping because obviously the line managers have different objectives than let's say a matrix project manager or a process manager. And um, I, think, I think it would make sense to uh, predefine some obstacles or some, some, some parts in the map beforehand and I, saying, okay, this is the corporate strategy and, and please every team member uh, and really brainstorm on, on the challenge we have ahead and how we can cross the river, how we can climb this mountain, how we can go through the I don't know how we can yep. um, kind of define new fireplaces where we gather with new team members and with some 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 new people around us. So uh, because you know this reminds me a little bit on this kind of um, when I was learning Latin in school, then we had to read Caesar, you know, the Bellum Gallicum, so the Italian War, and he described when he crossed the Rhone River, yep. uh, the the diocese have already. <laughs> Uh, been um, fallen so alaya ayakta est yeah it means that um, so there's a decision so everybody has this kind of we have to cross the river to make a new decision yep so I, I, I think I think this is a very interesting object well, um, perspective I think. every time we run a session it is slightly different and I mean I did it with the Central Bank of Indonesia which was fascinating. And when we did it in Bali with the central bank there, we actually had the doorman drawing his map as well. So it's fascinating to get a cross section of people because you're not asking them to sort of come up with the strategy. You're asking them, how do they feel at this moment about the territory? So it's fascinatingly insightful. But the other point you made that is very important is it's very important to have a clear objective. So today we with the NHS, they want to create a community of 2000 people in their network by March the 21st. How do they see that? And because of that clarity, you've then got a map that deals with that clarity. So it really depends on the different objectives and us working with someone. Doubtson, is that? Yeah, that's exactly it. It depends on what you want to achieve. The other, like beginning this year, I worked with a helicopter company in Rwanda here, and they just had kind of agreed on their new uh, strategy, but they wanted the team involved to make sure if, if they saw this was realistic or if somewhere needed twisting and turning, tweaking to, to make sure that they could implement it. So they started with the, 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 um, explaining this new vision and then asking everybody to come up with how they would see the journey of how to make this happen. You know, so, so there was also a clear question and then you get different kind of input than when you have, yeah, a, a, a different, different company. But usually, because you were talking about levels and hierarchy, the cleaners, the cookers, the drivers, they have such amazing insights 
uh, and often so much to contribute to these kind of discussions, you'd be surprised. And it's also really powerful to have everybody involved. Depending so, on the size of the organization, the cross yeah. section and everything. Yeah. But yes, I mean, that's, that's why it's, we're finding it so fascinating. And that's why I love doing it. That's why every day, you know, I never know what I'm going to see on a map. And every time I do it, there's something new and, and, and wonderful. So uh, thank you. Well, that's been, uh, and as I say, please, please, please get in contact with us. Um, and we'd love to answer your questions, show you what we're doing and uh, share, share this movement with you. Well, thank you so much, Anthony. It was really another outstanding session. Thank you so much. And also to um, Dutsin. Dutsin, am I saying her name correctly? I hope I'm pronouncing Dautzen. it correctly. Dautzen, sorry. Dautzen, sorry. Thank you so much, Dautzen. It was very, very, thank you very much for everything. Um, and if with Anthony's permission, because people were asking me, if you share the recording with me, Anthony, I would uh, would it be okay to put it on YouTube? Because already I'm being asked, will you, the recording of this be available on YouTube? If everybody is happy with that, we would obviously be happy uh, if, you know, that's obviously everybody, but absolutely, I'll send it to you immediately. This is over. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you again. I think, you know, I saw, I hope you saw what people were writing in this chat, but I saw lots yeah, of thank yeah. yous, inspirational. Thank you so much, you know, Really, really, really people found this very useful and really interesting. So thank you for that. Well, it's an honor working with you, Nadia, and thanks for having, having the, the courage to re-invite us. So uh, that's great. Yeah. And, uh, looking that's forward pleasure. to seeing you soon and, and going on journeys with you uh, to different places. And we'll take you to the Maasai and bring the Maasai to you and bring life together. So please, please let us know. But thank you all very, very much. Thank you very much, people. Nice to meet you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Well, good Thanks. night. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. Thank you.